Good evening, I'm Madison Carmouche. Tonight we bring you a developing story out of Perry County. One person is dead after a shooting near the Perry, not County line. Deputies with the Perry County Sheriff's Office received a call on Saturday evening. The man was identified by the Perry County Coroner's Office as 38-year-old Samuel Joseph Smith. He was taken to Hazard ARH where he died. Officials are searching for two men. They report left the scene on a blue ATV headed into Knott County. In Harlan County, Kentucky State Police is investigating after a body was found in Cumberland. The body of a man was found behind the Rebe Rebecca Cottle Public Library on Sunday morning. Troopers do not suspect foul play or that the body was there for a long time. The man's name has not been released, but he was taken to the state medical examiner's office for an autopsy. One pedestrian is dead after a juvenile lost control of their car in Estill County. The man was identified as 34 year old Christopher Lemaster of Irvin. He was taken to the University of Kentucky Albert B. Chandler Hospital where he was pronounced dead by the Fayette County Coroner. Kentucky State Police continues to investigate the incident. Our temperatures for the overnight are going to be staying nice and warm at the moment. They're still stuck in the 60s, even close towards the 70 degree region for parts of the region. You can definitely expect a lot of that warmth to be retained as we kind of look to see what our overnight and then early tomorrow morning is going to look at. The lowest we're going to drop for that overnight is going to be down to the low 60s. Some lighter winds and cloudy skies are then going to tumble into a lot more activity as we look at our day tomorrow. Folks, you can expect a major warm-up for your day. I'm talking temperatures are going to get up towards 78 degrees. And we're going to start to see some chance rain showers. A lot of activity is happening in northern portions of the state, and that is going to allow a few storms to kick back, especially once we get past those mid morning hours. But look at those temperatures climb. By the time we're at the 4 o'clock hour, we're in the 80s. There's lots more to talk about weather wise, but I'll give you a breakdown in just a few more moments. Madison. Alexa, thank you. Officials in Perry County have declared the week of the young child in April. WYMT's RJ Johnson shares what officials are planning to do with this week. Each year, the National Early Childhood Association designates one week in April as the week of the young child. Officials in the city of Hazard and Perry County are declaring that week as April 6th through the 12th. Community Impact Lead Coordinator Kim Hoskins says they are focusing on kids in preschool and kindergarten. What we are, our focus primarily is today is to raise awareness for the fact that we have limited spaces in our child care centers, um, limited early childhood uh, facilities in general. So we are hoping and pleading that we can get more state funding. Saying it's important to lead the next generation into the right direction. They are our future. And if they don't come in with a good foundation, they're going to be lost from the get go. Save the Children Community Impact Lead Coordinator Christy Minks says kids can be impacted by not attending any form of preschool. So when you start not until kindergarten, you're already behind. So we just want to bring awareness to early childhood altogether. Hoskins says they'll be in different schools working with students in several ways. Well, we're, we're hoping that this week will be a fun week for the children, most of all, because sometimes that's the only entertainment they have. We have supplied all of the schools, uh, K through kindergarten and preschool, with the materials that they can utilize for those activities so it doesn't put extra stress on the teachers. And uh, our ECCs are going to be having a play and learn group. Kicking things off for the week of the young child. In Hazard, RJ Johnson, WYMT Mountain News. A bill aiming to alleviate Kentucky substance abuse and mental health crisis is moving forward in the legislature. On Friday, the Kentucky General Assembly passed House Bill 1, which will allocate $20 million in the budget to Bowling Green's Anchor Project. According to a press release, the project has an evidence-based plan to create a mental health and substance use intake center an Office of Drug Control Policy, and a Life Learning Center model for their region. What's really special is that it, this doesn't exist in the state of Kentucky. Uh, we can be a beacon of hope, we can be that beacon of success, and we can show the nation, we can show our commonwealth how we can get this done. And we have a goal, 
and all everyone coming together um, is how you get that goal done. Land and staffing have been promised by Life Skills, and according to Mayor Alcott, the new intake center should be ready and operational within the next two years. The journey to addiction recovery is different for everyone, but organizations like Brightview say they understand that. Brightview focuses on helping people through outpatient medication-assisted treatment programs, counseling, group therapy, and social support. Since opening its first Kentucky location in 2020, they are celebrating serving more than 5,000 patients. They offer treatment on demand, meaning they meet patients where they are on their recovery journey. They get started with their treatment on day one. Um, you know, in this field, it's in this treatment space, uh, it's vital that when someone is ready um, and they're looking for help, that there is help available. According to the CDC, Kentucky overdose deaths were down 3% from 2022 to 2023. That's better than the national average of 2.3%. Nearly a month ago, Louisville fire crews rescued Sydney Thomas from her Cisco truck dangling over the edge of the Second Street Bridge. Now, while Thomas recovers from the accident, her parents are taking care of her four-year-old son, Mason. But there are, they are facing some unique difficulties. Mason is autistic and almost entirely nonverbal. And like many four-year-olds, Mason is full of energy. Because the family lives in a busy neighborhood, they want to be extra cautious to ensure that Mason is safe. You have to have eyes on him 24-7 because it's not safe. We want him to be able to have a backyard for him to enjoy himself and for us to know that he's safe. And we're not quite there yet. Um, we're working on it, but we just, uh, funds are just pretty tight right now. The Carvers have set up a GoFundMe page hoping to be able to raise a little money for a fence. Crews in Baltimore have started to work on clearing the wreckage from this week's bridge collapse. CBS's Christian Benavidez reports the road to recovery will be a long one. Work to clear the wreckage from this week's bridge collapse and restore entry to the port of Baltimore is underway. Officials hope to open a temporary channel to get smaller ships moving back in the port. Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg on Face the Nation. This is going to be a very complex process. There are even now forces acting on that steel. So it takes a lot to make sure that it can be dismantled safely, to make sure that the vessel stays where it is supposed to be and doesn't swing out into the channel. But it has to be done. Still no timeline from when the port will reopen has left thousands of port workers waiting. We're all wondering how long it's going to take to clear the main channel so we can get ships back in so we can work. The city's mayor says $300,000 has been set aside for the families of the victims who died in the collapse between government and nonprofit groups. And federally, about $2 million in small business loans has been set aside for companies who have been affected. I am focused on the total impact of, on humans, right? And that begins with the loss of life. That then goes to uh, uh, what's going to happen for those families and then the economic uh, realities following this. And that's where our focus is going to continue to be. Baltimore-bound container ships now being rerouted to other ports. Baltimore handles more cars and farm equipment than any other port in America. Cristian Benavides, CBS News. President Biden is scheduled to visit the site of the bridge collapse next week. Coming up at 11, we will take a look at what President Biden's plans for the Francis Scott Key Bridge cleanup are this week.